Ayan, magandang araw po Luzon, Visayas at Mindanao. Magkakasama po tayong muli upang maghatid tayo ng latest updates tungkol sa education sector. Ito po ang Edu Action, Action at Solution para sa Edukasyon, the Virtual Press Conference. I would like to welcome all our learners, our parents and teachers na nanonood po sa atin live sa DepEd Philippines Facebook page. Pinabati ko rin po ang ating mga friends from the media at press na maya-maya lamang ay makakausap si Secretary mismo at iba pang officials natin sa DepEd. Siyempre, good morning rin sa ating mga viewers sa iba't ibang social media accounts ng ating mga media partners sa iba't ibang panig ng bansa. Kasama na po dyan ang CLTV36. DWRB 103.9 News FM Radio Bulacan. Ang, ang dyan din po ang Roblon Cable, Kabangkalan Community Antenna TV, Ascenso Osamis News Channel, at The Post. Siyempre, 
Good morning. Allow me to acknowledge the presence of our officials headed by Secretary Lenore Malcolis Briones. Kasama rin po natin si Assistant Secretary Malcolm Garma at Director Roger Masapol. Sa mga nakaraang buwan po ay nakikipag-ugnayan at kumunsulta ang DepEd sa iba't ibang grupo kasama na dyan ang IATF, DOH at iba pang health experts upang pag-usapan ang unti-unting pagbabalik ng face-to-face -face classes. Katuwang sila ng DepEd sa pagplano at paglatag ng guidelines mula sa pagpili sa mga eskwelahan hanggang sa pagpapatupad nito ngayong November 15. Upang maisiguro na ligtas at um, ligtas ang bawat isa habang ipinagpapatuloy natin ang edukasyon sa gitna nitong pandemya. Katunayan, pirmado na nga po ang ating DepEd DOH Joint Memorandum Circular ukol sa nasabing plano na yan. Kaya't ngayong araw na ito, marami po tayong matututunan at malalaman mga updates tungkol sa ating face-to-face -face pilot classes. Malalaman natin ngayon and to formally um, start this program, I would like to call on now Director Roger Masapol for his updates on the preparation of the pilot implementation of our face-to-face -face classes. Director Roger, good morning po. Hi, good morning, uh, Director Nina, and magandang umaga sa lahat ng nanonood ngayon sa ating press conference on face-to-face. -face. Um, magbibigay ako ng uh, quick lang na updates kung ano na yung nagawa natin sa departamento matapos na mapirmahan yung ating joint circular. So let me just share my screen. Uh, let me just check, uh, Director Nina, if uh, my screen is already uh, shown. Yes, we can see your screen, Director Roger. Siguro presentation mode na lang, Director Roger. Yeah, so maraming yeah. salamat. Um, ang unang papakita ko ay ito pa yung ulit-ulitin namin yung aming operational framework ng ating pag-implement ng face-to-face. -face. This is a shared responsibility where all sectors, uh, pinangunahan po yan ng DOH, DepEd, yung LGU and the community where the school is located yung ating concerned government agencies like UH, uh, the ILG, and of course, importante po yung uh, school personnel natin, yung relasyon niya doon sa family na papayagang mag uh, sumali ang kanilang anak sa face-to-face -face natin. So tinitingnan natin dito ang apat na, na elements ng ating uh, framework, yung safe operation, paano ba magbubukas uh, ang school na safe para sa mga bata at para sa mga school personnel, at ano bang klaseng pagtuturo ang gagawin sa uh, limited face-to-face -face na to At uh, sinisiguro natin na yung ating mga nangangailangan ng uh, agarang uh, intervention sa yung mga nahihirapan sa ating uh, distance learning ay maisali. At of course, very important po yung huli, yung paniniguro natin na ang pagpasok ng mga bata sa ating paaralan ay safe at protected sila habang nasa school sila at uh, papunta sa kanilang bahay. Ngayon, just a quick ano lang, recap. No? Doon sa joint circular, ito po yung mga standards na naset doon. Uh, gusto ko lang itong quickly i-run sa inyo. Yung pilot phase natin, uh, uh, based on the approval of the president, 120 schools. Yung 100 from public school at yung 20 from private school. Yung participating schools, kailangan una, mayroong LGU concurrence. Pangalawa, kailangan located siya ngayon sa level 2 at yung uh, level 2 at yung mga learners and uh, shall pass the school safety assessment tool natin. Ito yung ating ginamit na basihan sa pagpili ng ating mga pilot schools. So sa learners naman, uh, unang-una po kailangan may consent po yung parents at yung bata na sasali ay walang comorbidities. Yung grade level na mag-implement is K-3 for elementary at sa senior high school yung TVL tracks. Yung class size natin, um, uh, pinababa po natin ang ating class size, 12 lang sa kinder na dati po ito ay 25, 16 lang sa grades 1 to 3 na dati po ito ay 30 to 35. At yung uh, senior high school natin sa laboratory, ito po ay dating 20, ngayon 12. Pero po sa, pag, sa classroom setting, we allowed up to 20 students. Yung distancing natin sa loob ng classroom, 1 to 2 meters apart. 
yung vaccination as uh, promised by DepEd and UH, uh, yung pong mga teacher at ng ating mga school personnel na, na nasasali o may involved doon sa pilot phase ay vaccinated. Yung atin pong uh, isinet na start noong pilot phase natin is November 15 at yung duration is two months. Uh, and then ang approach natin, it's uh, blended. It's not going to be a full face-to-face. -face. So blended po siya. And then yung health and safety protocol, uh, uh, inisig sinisiguro po ng DepEd at ng ating pa-partners, UH, na yung mga school na kasali ay mag uh, magpo-full compliant doon sa uh, IATF and UH rules on safe and uh, health protocols natin. Ngayon, ano na po yung nagawang mga preparations natin? So, right after noong ating uh, joint circular uh, signing, uh, nagsimula na po yung maagarang ma ano, pag-prepare uh, ng ating mga schools natin. So, ang uh, uh, natapos na po ng ating mga schools mula doon sa 638 yung pag-reassess ng kanilang readiness using the school safety assessment tool. Ito po yung very stringent na assessment tool para mapili natin ang school na uh, ano na mag uh, mag implement ng face to face. And then uh, we uh, validate yung 59 schools. Mamaya sa part ni Asik Malco malalaman natin ilan dito sa 59 ang magtutuloy. And then, uh, uh, ongoing po, yung iba tapos na sa pagkikipag-coordinate sa LGU at doon sa mga IP community leaders kasi marami po sa ating mga pilot school mula doon sa 59 ang located po sa mga ancestral domain doon sa mga uh, community na karamihan ay mga IP. Ang nakakatuwa po sa ating update is uh, karamihan po sa mga schools dito sa 59 na napili ay nakapagkandak na po ng mga parents orientation at nakakuha na rin sila karamihan ng mga parent consent. And then um, ito ang mga school na to ay uh, based doon sa aming analysis ng result ng administration ng school assessment tool ay nakapag-comply sila sa standards ng ating hihingi para sila ay makonsider sa face to face. And then ang kagandahan po nito kasi um, doon sa mga proposal na pinakita ng ating mga pilot school sa public school ay nag-indicate na sila kung ano yung mga uh, additional na budget requirements na kanilang hihingin sa atin. Sa central office naman po, um, marami na pong na-issue ang ating butihing kalihim na mga policy guidelines para sa tuloy-tuloy na at mabilis ang pag-prepare pag, uh, ng ating mga schools, ng ating mga division at ating mga regions. So unang-una, uh, right after noong, ano, noong joint circular, nakapag-issue po ang ating kagawaran ng detailed instruction on the preparation of uh, to undertake uh, by pilot school. And ito yung mga instruction na, na ginawa natin sa para ma, mayroong guide ang mga public school na mapipili kung paano sila mag-prepare for the face-to-face. -face. And then nag-issue din po ang gagawaran ng uh, isang memorandum na ito naman po ay uh, ang naglalayong itong i-prepare lahat ang buong schools natin, yung ating 61,000 schools sa ating uh, public and private ay kailangan ng i-assess doon sa uh, safety assessment tool and preparation po sa ating uh, phase 2 or expansion at sa doon sa ating transitioning to, to new normal. So uh, kasama din po sa uh, guidelines na yon kung paano pipiliin yung private school na 20. And then nag-issue rin po ang ating kalihim ng isang uh, memo on the accountability map. Dito po ay Sinabi ng ating kalihim ano yung road ng bawat office sa central office na gagawin nila para ma-push ng mabilisan ang ano ang pagpi-prepare ng ating schools para sa face-to-face -face, uh, towards November 15. And then ang kagandahan din po uh, nag nag-set aside po ng funds po ang ating finance group na augmentation fund para doon sa mapipiling uh, 100 pilot schools. And then mayroon na po tayong almost final na MNE plan. Uh, ito pong gagamitin natin kung para suriin ang kinalabasan ng ating pilot uh, implementation. And then yung nag-prepare na rin po ang DepEd ng activity calendar. Dito po makikita natin yung on a weekly basis starting uh, last week ano yung nagawa at ano yung magagag magagagawin pa ng DepEd offices para tulungan yung mga schools natin sa pag-prepare. Ngayon, sa selection naman ng, ano, ng uh, private school, Doon sa inisyon ni Secretary na instruction, 
nakalagay doon na ang bawat region ay magnonominate ng tatlong private schools sa central office. At itong tatlong ito, so from the 16 regions, ito ay isa subject pa rin ito sa evaluation ng DOH and then ng DepEd to the uh, ating uh, private education office para piliin yung 20 na inapprove ng ating presidente. And then, um, yun nga, magsasubmit sila ng proposal kung paano nila i-implement ang face-to-face. -face. Sa mga international school naman, it was recommended uh, to the secretary yung uh, i-allow sila mag-implement ng face-to-face -face on top of the 120, but they shall take full responsibility. But of course, yung kanilang uh, commencement ng pag-implement, kailangan po ito ng approval ng IATF. Now, um, Ang, ang isang magandang balita kasi na, uh, nakipagpulong po ang kagawaran sa national uh, sa NTF yung vaccination task force ng gobyerno para uh, ma-accelerate yung vaccination ng teachers natin at ibang school personnel. So napag-agrihan po ng DepEd sa kanang NTF and BOC yung itong framework na to. So magsisimula yung ating accelerated vaccination doon sa 59 na napili plus yung mga nanominate sa NCR. And then after that na makomplete um, i-cover na yung 638 na schools plus yung NCR. And then after that, nationwide na po. This will include public and private schools. So ang kailangan lang po na ma ano ma magawa is uh, right now uh, magsasubmit na po ang ating uh, uh, school Health and Nutrition Division ng DepEd yung line list natin na nakuha na sa mga private school natin. So mayroon, magkakaroon na po tayo ng line list. And then after that, pag mayroon ng line list, ito po submit natin sa NTF at uh, makipag-coordinate po tayo sa NTF and LGU for identification of possible vaccination sites. Na yun naman po ang ginagawa talaga ng mga LGU. And then mag-provide po ang DepEd ng manpower support sa LGU para mapabilis po talaga ang pag-vaccinate uh, ng ating mga teachers. And then, uh, mobilization of partners. Partners, uh, malaking tulong po at nagpapasalamat po ang kagawaran sa mga pledges at mga commitment ng ating mga partners. May mga early commitments na po tayo na nakuha from USAID, from GIZ, UNICEF, Australian Embassy, UNILAB, Save the Children, Avoidance Group, at iba pang mga partners natin na nag, uh, gusto talagang tumulong sa kagawaran para maging ma maayos yung pag-implement natin ng ating mga ng ating face to face and then uh, the secretary has designated the external partnership service under UCT Tony Umali na siya yung maglilit noong mobilization and then management of uh, partner support to implement the implementation of face to face so bali this is my last slide uh, director Nika and uh, maraming salamat Maraming salamat, Director Roger. Thank you for giving us those updates. No, so malinaw po sa update ni Director Roger. Um, these are very, uh, these are parang the major takeaways. No, it is a shared responsibility. So buong community kasama na po pati ang ating LGU and all our other stakeholders, pati external partnerships na mobilize na natin. And again, this is blended and not purely face-to-face -face tamang. And nabanggit nga ni Director Roger kanina, we have 59 schools. So ngayon naman, to give us an update tungkol sa mga eskwelahan po na napili para sa ating pilot implementation of face-to-face -face classes, I would like to call on now Assistant Secretary Malcolm Garma to provide his updates. Magandang umaga, Nina. Magandang umaga sa lahat ng uh, ating mga tagas-subaybay no, dito sa ating programa. Uh, pero bago ako magpatuloy, Director ni Nina, uh, okay ba yung audio ko? Uh, yes, we can hear ba? very well, Tom. Okay, sige. So again, I uh, would like to greet everyone. A pleasant morning uh, to our Secretary. Magandang umaga po, ma'am. And... Uh, and as mentioned by Director Roger, I'm, I'm about to present to you the updates no, with regards to the details of the pilot face-to-face, -face, no? specifically to identify uh, which among the 59 schools that was ori originally uh, given to us by DOH uh, based on their granular assessment have qualified no? based on our uh, assessment tools that 
uh, has been mentioned also by Director Roger. So, uh, Sekretariat or, or PAS, can, can, pwede po bang paki on screen na po yung ating presentation? Okay. So, Director Nina, na nakikita na ba sa ating screen yung presentation? Yes, ASEC. Okay. Nasa screen po. Sige. So, ito pong update na ito ay uh, batay po sa ating uh, pagsusuri no, noong nakaraang October 2, 2021. Pero gusto ko pong banggitin na meron po tayo mga recent developments or recent updates. Pero hindi pa po natin muna Uh, ipapahayag ngayon sapagkat kailangan pa ho natin ng uh, patuloy na, na pagkumpirma no, itong mga bagong madadagdag. So for now, we will just focus on the initial list submitted to us by DOH on the 59 schools. Next slide please. So ito po presentasyon na ito ay naka, nakahati po sa, sa iba't ibang pahagi. Uh, una po yung pagpapakita kung ilan ito pong uh, uh, 50 na eskwelahan na ayon sa DOH ay pwedeng uh, mapag makapag-umpisa ang ating pilot implementation. Uh, kasama din po dito uh, bilang konsiderasyon doon po sa ating mga regions or local government units na humihiling na ang kanila pong mga lugar o yung mga eskwelahan sa kanilang mga lugar ay mapabilang dito po sa ating isasagawang implementasyon ng pilot phase three. Pangatlo po ay para mabigyan po ng ideya ang ating pong mga uh, taga-subaybay, ang ating pong media, uh, kung ano na po ang status ng ating pong bakbakuna ng ating pangaguro at uh, yung mga personalidad o personnel that will be present during the pilot implementation of the phase three. Uh, alam naman po natin na malaking bahagi o isang napakalagang bahagi nitong implementasyon natin ay masiguro na ang makakasama ng ating pong mga mag-aaral uh, sa kanilang skwelahan ay ang ating pong mga guro at uh, kawani na bakunado na. Piniling din po natin sa mga rehiyon uh, na sa kanila pong pagpapatupad ng face-to-face, -face, uh, ano po ba yung maaring kailanganin pa nila Uh, dagdag na pangangailangan at uh, ito po ay uh, tutugunan naman ng ating pong kagawaran. Next slide please. So ba, katulad po na nabanggit ni Director Roger, uh, tayo po ay nag-submit ng uh, listahan sa DOH na kinapapalooban po ng 638 schools uh, as our nomination no, for the possible uh, implementation of the face-to-face. And accordingly, uh, based on the joint memorandum circular between DepEd and DOH, uh, isang daang po na public school at uh, dalawang pong pribadong paaralan ang pinayagan na makapag-umpisa. So, batay po sa isinumiti nating uh, listahan na kinapapalooban ng 638 schools, ay limampot siyang po dito ang nasuri ng DOH na maaari pong isama dito sa ating inisyal na pagpapatupad ng pilot face-to-face. -face. So ito po yung 59 schools uh, that we received no, initially and we received this list last October 2, 2021. So matapos po na matanggap natin itong listahan na ito, kagyat po tayo mag-issue ng memorandum upang uh, bigyan po ng direktiba ang ating pong mga rehiyon na mabibilang dito sa nakapabilang dito sa 59 schools na magsagawa ng kanilang uh, mabilis na pag-update o pag-suri uh, kung ito pong mga eskwelahan sa kanilang rehiyon ay papasa o uh, naka, naka nakatugma o nakaakma doon sa ating ginawang school safety assessment tool. Next slide please.
Okay. So, direct kanina, ito siguro yung ano no, yung isang napakahalagang bagay na gusto nating bigay ngayon bilang impormasyon. So, doon po sa limang po siya na naunang listahan, tatlong po po rito ang magsisimula ng pilot face-to-face -face sa November 15. So, uh, ito pong tatlong pong skwelahan na ito ay ito po yung mga pumasa doon sa ating uh, ginawang pag-validate o pagsusuri patay po doon sa ating school safety assessment team. Pamaya po tingnan natin yung kadahilanan no, kung bakit may mga skwelahan na hindi po mapapabilang muna dito sa ating pilot implementation. Sige, next slide po. So, ito ang breakdown ng atin pong mga uh, skwelahan o bilang ng mga paaralan sa bawat rehiyon na bubuo nung tatlong po. So, for Region 5, we have 3. So, 4 out of 3. Region 6, 3. Lahat po sila ay uh, magpaparticipate. Uh, uh, yung Region 7 po, uh, walo. Region 9, walo. Region 10, anim. Ang Region 12 ay dalawa. Next slide, please. So ito po yung mga paaralan na, na bubuo ng tatlong pong skwelahan. So Gutusan Elementary School, Mary B. Perpetua National High School, Sinalongan Elementary School, lahat po sila ay nasa lalawigan ng Masbate. May, Mayabay Elementary School, Igsoro Elementary School na pawang nasa Antique at Lacerna Integrated School na nasa Aklan. Next slide please. Basak Elementary School, Mahanlud Elementary School, Kabagdalan Elementary School, Luyong Baybay Elementary School, Kanyang Marcelo Luna National High School, Busay National High School, Pilar National High School, Shokon Elementary School at lahat po ito ay nasa lalawigan ng Cebu. Next slide, please. Silo Elementary School, San Vicente Elementary School. Mga, uh, yung dalawa pong nauna ay nasa lalawigan po ng Sambuanga, Sibugay. At uh, itong mga, mga National High School, mga Elementary School at Lala Elementary School ay nasa siyudad ng Pagadian. Suminot so, National High School, Tabina Elementary School at Gipos National High School ay kabilang naman po sa lalawigan ng Sambuanga del Sur. Next slide please. Sa Region 10, we have Dalama Elementary School, Babalaya Elementary School, Napo Elementary School, Masiba Integrated School, Tambacon Integrated School, Parcela T. Mabanta National High School, Uh, na lahat po ay pawang nasa lalawigan ng Lanao del Norte. At ito pong nasa Region 12, dalawa po uh, galing o nasa lalawigan ng North Catabato, ang Paco National High School at Bato Elementary School. Next slide please. So, nagbanggit ko po kanina, Director Nina, na Bagamat meron pong initial na listahan no, yung ating pong DOH, no, yung 59 schools, uh, meron pong mga LGU na humihiling na sana masama din yung kanilang mga lugar, uh, yung mga skwelahan sa kanilang lugar dito sa ating pilot face-to-face. -face. So batay po sa aming pagsusuri, uh, batay po sa 46 o 46 na kahilingan Uh, dalawang po siyang po rito ang actually bahagi na nung 638. Ngunit kailangan pa rin po nating suriing mabuti kung ito po bang 46 na square ilalabas po, binibigay sa atin ng Department of Health. Next slide po. So ito naman po ay uh, pagpapakita o pagtataya ng estado ng ating uh, Uh, mga kaguruan at kawani uh, kung sila po ay bakunado na o hindi. So, hindi ko na po Director Nina isa-isahin, no? uh, pero makikita po natin 
na dito sa Limpungput Siam uh, sa tatlong eskwelahan na magpapatuloy ng kanila pong uh, pilot face to face ngayong November 15 malaking bahagi na po dito ang uh, ng ating mga kawani at kaguruan ang napabakunahan na uh, bagamat uh, alam natin na hindi pa 100% no yung bakunado ay patuloy po yung ating sinasagawang uh, kampanya no na ang ating pong mga kaguruan lalong-lalo na dito sa mga paaralan na magsasagawa ng pilot face to face ay masigurong sila ay nabakunahan at nabanggit na ni Director Roger kanina na tayo po ay meron ng mga formal na ugnayan sa National Task Force DOH at NVOC upang uh, ma-institutionalize natin itong ating uh, at mapabilis itong pagpapabakuna natin Uh, gusto ko na rin pong banggitin na bahagi po ng ating uh, ginagawang uh, programa ngayon ay uh, makabuo po tayo ng uh, in incentive program no para po sa ating mga kaguruan at kawani na uh, na bakunahan na. Next slide please. Okay. So ito po ay pagpapatuloy lang ng estado ng vaccination. Next slide please. Okay, next slide. Next slide. So ito po yung bilang ng kabuuan. So sa loob sa kabuuan uh, 444 na personnel, uh, 370 na po nito ang nabakunahan. Or kung hindi man, uh, dalawang dose ay nakaunang uh, dose na po ng bakuna. Next slide po. Okay. So ang mga susunod po na slide ay uh, nabanggit ko kanina na hinihirin po natin sa kanila yung mga posibleng pangangailangan ng ating mga paaralan sa kanilang pagpapatupad ng face-to-face. -face. Next slide. Okay. Sige, next slide. Okay. Uh, Director Dina, bago po ako magtapos ng aking uh, presentasyon, gusto ko lamang kong banggitin na ito pong tatlong pong paaralan na magsisimulang mag-face-to-face uh, -face simula po ikalabing lima ng Nobyembre. Ito po ay madadagdagan. So, in fact, last, uh, yesterday we already had the second round of validation in the regions as provided for in the list, in the new list submitted by DOH to DepEd. So yung pong 59 na original list, naging 207 na po yun. So patay doon sa 207, nagkaroon na po tayo ng pangalawang yugto ng validasyon, itong mga posible pang madagdag. Kaya lang, uh, gaya ng nabanggit ko, uh, bago po natin ipahayag na ito ay official na numero, ay gusto po natin munang isailalim ito sa mas malalim uh, pang pagsusuri. So, but to give you a rough estimate of how many so far as of last uh, as of yesterday we already have 70 so ang objective natin ay buuin natin yung isang daan na pampublikong paaralan sa DepEd no uh, na magsisimula ng uh, pilot face to face na yung darating na ikalibang labing lima ng Nobyembre so uh, batay po sa listahan na binabig, binibigay sa atin ng Department of Health so dito po natin binabatay kung ano pa hong skwelahan ang madadagdag. So importante ho dito na tayo ay tumutugon doon sa ating polisiya ng shared responsibility. So katulad po ng nabanggit kanina, ang malaki pong dahilan ng hindi uh, pagkakasama ng paaralan, bagamat sila po ay bahagi ng listahan ng DOH, ay yung hindi pagpayag ng LGU o hindi pagpayag ng komunidad o ng uh, mga magulang at pangatlo kung ang kanilang lugar ay biglang dumami ang kaso ng COVID. So ito po yung mga dahilan kung bakit yung sa 59 naging tatlong po na lang. At uh, pinangangasiwaan naman ng ating pong, uh, private education office sa ilalim po ni Director Joyce Antaya. So, Director Nina, yun lang po muna ang ating pong may babahaging update.
Thank you. Maraming salamat. That was Assistant Secretary Malcolm Garma. Thank you, ASEC. And um, galing nga sa sinabi ni ASEC Garma, no? We have 30 schools. Initial list po muna ang nilabas na 30 schools. And they will begin on November 15. Sila po yung initially nakapasa dun sa ating school safety assessment tool. Pero patuloy pa rin po ang assessment at nais po natin kumpletunin yung 100 schools. Ayan, maraming salamat ulit, ASEC Garma. Ngayon naman po, bago magkaroon ng open forum, kasama ang ating mga media partners, ating pakinggan muna ang mensahe ng ating Secretary of Education, who, by the way po, ah, was recently awarded the prestigious Lifetime Contributor Award for the Public Sector at the 12th Asia CEO Awards for her exemplary contributions to nation-building and response to the challenges in basic education in the country. And who just last Saturday, on her birthday, had a new hybrid, Gomamela, named after her. So the University of the Philippines, Los Banos, Women in Public Service, named the Gomamela Hibiscus Rosa Sinenses Lenor Magpolis Briones in honor of the secretary. And I can see the secretary, she's wearing also the pin of the Gumamela. Ayan, we have it here. So, ladies and gentlemen, I give you Secretary Ninor Magpolis Briones. Maraming salamat, Tani, na. Maraming salamat din. Magandang umaga sa lahat na nanonood at nakikinig sa programa. Ang focus na at programa ito, ang focus natin ngayong umaga ay magbigay as much as possible and as frequently as possible yung mga updates uh, tungkol sa ating face-to-face -face, um, um, pilot uh, implementation. Kasi ito matagal ng hinintay, uh, lahat nag-aabang, ang international community uh, nagbabantay din. Kaya uh, gusto natin na uh, as often as possible magbigay tayo ng accurate na information kung ano na ang estado ng ating uh, pilot implementation. Salamat din Nina for mentioning uh, the uh, two um, awards. Uh, ang pinaka-best na mga awards are those which are unsolicited. Uh, Itong dalawang awards na ito, yung Asian uh, CEO Award was unsolicited. I don't even know who nominated me and what was the process. I received uh, a letter informing me of the award and <clears throat> I was very uh, impressed because uh, they, uh, the organizers gave recognition to public sector executives. Uh, we always associate uh, management with advances from the private sector, uh, new things, new ways of doing uh, and um, producing goods and services. Uh, but uh, at the same time, uh, we have to give more attention also to those in the public sector. And I'm very grateful for that um, award. Um, I believe that more than at any time, in, in the history of this country uh, have our public sector executives work as hard and as tirelessly as they are doing uh, at present, especially in an environment which is unpredictable and sometimes hostile environment as well as a friendly environment. Uh, I'm also grateful for the um, award of the um, naming of the uh, hibiscus. Uh, we all know about the, what uh, Institute of Plant Breeding does. Um, they usually um, develop hybrids, which are you know listed for the first time, etc., and done by uh, established uh, scientists. And the process is quite uh, complicated. And um, I, I have never thought of myself as an awardee because I've never thought of myself as a hard scientist. I always associate uh, awardees with those in the hard sciences, as well as uh, spouses of, of, of uh, our presidents. 
uh, who are um, also um, given such an honor. And, and so uh, I'm very grateful also to the um, Institute of Plant uh, Breeding for, um, it took some time to, of course, to, to produce uh, the, the hybrid, but the result, of course, is, is also very beautiful. Ang sabi ko nga, kawawa naman ang magiging great grandchild ko. Kasi uh, my grandchild right now is 18 years old, hindi siya mahirapan. Pero most will have to learn how to write the scientific name kasi ay hibiscus prosas sinensis leonor magtolis briones ang haba-haba namang susulatin niya. So uh, thank you for this uh, recognition at this time of my life. Now, um, I don't think I should add to the, uh, the data and the information which has been shared by uh, uh, Director Roger as well as um, uh, ASEC uh, Malcolm and uh, Jana Lahat. And I have also invited our, our undersecretaries led by uh, USEC uh, Nepo Malaluan so we can proceed immediately to the uh, questions. Kasi nandiyan na lahat na nasabi na natin kung anong estado ng ating programa. And I'm sure they are also prepared to answer your questions in detail as long as uh, along also with the policy issues which I might mention. I'd also like to make a special mention of, of um, the PLDP Gabay Guru program. Uh, it's an event which I really look forward to and I enjoy. I totally enjoy the huge crowds in Manila alone. You can have as many as 20,000 uh, screaming <laughs> teachers, uh, old, young, and uh, staff, and dancing and, and uh, clapping and, uh, and really uh, enjoying the honors and as well as competing for various prizes. So I want to thank my good friend, Manny Pangilinan, Cheye Revilla, Marisa Conde, Jan Yanez, Lynette Garcia Perez for uh, continually uh, giving such joy and fun and recognizing the value of our teachers. Thank you also for helping me celebrate my birthday by uh, <clears throat> the participation of some of my favorite popular uh, artists led by Martin Yavera, of course. So thank you, PLDP Gabay Guru. And now um, I would like to welcome questions uh, from, from the floor, from the press, and um, from the public. And um, Asik Dharma and um, Director Roger, as well as uh, Yusek Nepo and the other Yuseks will be very happy to answer because they want to know what is happening since this has been a huge, huge issue for the past uh, two years. Thank you. Thank you very much, Secretary. And now we are ready for our question and answer portion. We would just like to remind our friends from the media and press to kindly turn on po your microphones and of course your cameras then when you ask your questions. And we will be entertaining a maximum of two questions per media partner. And um, also, if you have other questions, but they are not related to the current topic, which is the face-to-face -face classes or pilot implementation of face-to-face -face classes, we will be referring your questions to the concerned offices and we will be sending the answers via Viber. Okay, so to begin our um, open Did forum, I I, yes, Secretary. I'm being so impolite as to uh, interrupt. I'd also like to mention that Undersecretary <coughs> Escobedo uh, is also joining us. He's Undersecretary for Operations, and he coordinates uh, the activities of the, the regions, the uh, operations aspect. So, and uh, unfortunately, uh, Yosek Nepo cannot uh, attend this morning because he is uh, also taking my place uh, in the uh, governing board meeting of, of CIMEO. CIMEO is this association of ministers of education, which is meeting today and tomorrow. And he is uh, taking my 
place. So, um, Music Revsi is here with us as well. Okay. Yeah, thank you and good morning to you, Secretary. Um, all right, Secretary, so we can start with our open forum. I'd like to call in our first media representative from ABS CBN News Online, Jewa Bernardo. Do we have Jewa Bernardo on the call with us? Ayan. ABS CBN News Online, Jewa Bernardo. If wala po, I can read the question. So the question is, in a recent Senate hearing, some lawmakers recommended to shorten the timeline of the pilot face-to-face -face classes to one month so more schools can implement it by next year or after the Christmas break. What's DepEd's reaction to this? Yes, yeah, Secretary. Yeah, if, if I can uh, start off, um, perhaps uh, one month would be too short because one month would include the prep, you know, the, the preparations. You don't start classes. Uh, just open your doors and let the kids come in. Uh, there are preparations to be made and then after the um, prescribed period is over then you have to have you have to uh, also uh, conduct the assessment so perhaps uh, one month might be uh, too short i would not know may i please ask uh, uh, asset garma or uh, yusek ramsey to, to comment on this uh, although from my from where i sit it might be too short one month might be too short. D Director Nina? Yes, Asik Malcolm, you're recognized. Yeah. Uh, bagamat ang atin pong uh, itinakdang panahon para doon sa ating pilot ay uh, dalawang buwan, no? Uh, kung di ako nagkakamali, Director Roger. Uh, tulad po na nabanggit ni Secretary, uh, marami pong aspekto itong gagawin nating pag-aaral at isa na nga po dito hindi lang po yung aspeto ng ng health no and and uh, safety ng ating mga mag-aaral at mga kaguruan pero mahalagang bagay o aspekto nitong pag-aaral natin yung pagtuturo yung aspekto ng pagtuturo at pagkakatuto ng ating mga mag-aaral so sa ngayon po ay uh, gumagawa tayo ng o may mga nagawa na po tayo mga instrumento para po masukat natin ito. So itong pong gagawin nating pilot study, uh, titingnan po natin, Secretary, kung hanggang saan yung pinaka maikling panahon na pwede nating uh, makumpleto yung ating pag-uulat sa Pangulo uh, kung gaano naging epektibo, ka-epektibo itong ginawa nating pilot. Pero siguro, Director Nina, marahil ang dahilan bakit natanong yan ay yung posibilidad na mas dumami pa no yung ating mai-involve na mga paaralan sa pilot face-to-face. Uh, -face. So gusto lang po nating ding, bigyang diin na doon po sa ating joint memorandum circular with DOH, uh, tinukoy lang po doon na isang daan muna yung mag-uumpisa. Uh, pero malinaw din po doon sa ating kasunduan ay yung expansion program. So definitely, uh, <laughs> naghahanda na rin po tayo. No? Uh, ang ating po mga rehiyon ay naghahanda na rin na kung sakaling uh, makumpleto natin yung isang daan na pampublikong paaralan, ay madagdagan pa ito. Uh, batay doon sa mga susunod pa o yung mga listahan na inilabas ng DOH na mga lugar na pwede nang uh, umasa dito sa ating face-to-face. -face. So, yung po yung specific uh, response natin, Secretary. So, we will look into that possibility of uh, possibly shortening no the period of the study but uh, kailangan po kumpleto para hindi po masayang yung ating pong uh, gagawing pag-aaral maraming salamat po thank you asik malcolm and um with your permission secretary can we proceed to the next question uh, i would just like to make uh, an additional uh, uh, comment uh, this is a good opportunity for us to emphasize that when we um, 
mean uh, face to face it does not mean the kind of face to face classes that we have been used to pre pandemic now you see the teacher every day you see the teachers during the various periods with different subjects etc uh it's going to be blended um and uh, so the the sessions of face to face will not be the same as the number of sessions perhaps uh in the uh uh pre pandemic uh days because of the uh, precautions that have to be undertaken so kung halimbawa uh like i know there are certain countries na twice a week there are certain countries na four times a week or mayroong ibang countries na how many times na tag half day and then if you limit it uh to one to one month halimbawa times four lang yan so uh, importante yung sinasabi ni uh, ni Asik Garma that uh, the data and the information that we get about its effectiveness etc has to be uh, sufficient kasi baka kukulangin uh, alam ko mayroong mga bansa na ano ang um, kanilang ano maybe once a week lang ang face to face eh, so that means only four sessions hindi natin makita kung uh, ano ba ang uh, what is working or what is not working so yun ang consideration uh, i-emphasize natin ito na ang face to face na i-implement natin is still blended with with other uh, uh, with other approaches only the other night i talked to um, a young learner in in uh, based in singapore ang sabi niya karamihan pa ring ano nila is is actually uh, online oo yung sa mga labs halimbawa kasi ito senior high school na itong batang ito yung mga laboratories kailangan talagang nandoon yung teacher magkita-kita sila but other lessons are are online so pag one month Ah, uh, tingnan natin na uh, tama yung sinasabi ni ni Asep uh, Malcolm na uh, we are open about this. Tingnan natin if we are satisfied that it works, that uh, it's going to be uh, uh, helpful, uh, then uh, we can consider uh, shortening the period of pilot. Uh, although ako sabi ko na a one month pilot uh, could may not necessarily provide us the the data and the information and the feedback that we are trying to get especially since uh, covid-19 is so unpredictable <laughs> di natin uh, alam di ba we, we we attempted it uh, early this year and uh, and uh, we were instructed to back out because of the entry of the new variant so uh, th- th- those factors will influence our our decisions Thank you. It's not uh, it's not as if all the countries are already facing their students every day. No, it's not like that. Um, each school has uh, worked out its own um, approach to face to face, depending on their situation, or and also each country. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Secretary, for those additional inputs. And we'd like to proceed with our next question. May we call on Ms. Ina Hernando of Manila Bulletin? Hello, good afternoon. Yes, can you hear me? We can hear you. Hello, belated happy birthday, po, Secretary. For my first question, po, uh, I would like to ask for Can you please clarify po bakit yung mga junior high school students were not included in the pilot face-to-face classes? And if ever po, kailan po plano ng DepEd na i-include yung other grade levels? Thank you. If I may start off uh, and uh, uh, ask uh, Malcolm can also help um, answer. Uh, yung advice kasi nanggaling sa mga groups natin of pediatric experts. Limang grupo yan of associations of experts in uh, pediatric um, health as well as education. Ang advice nila, na, ang pinaka uh, 
Sabay-sabayan, hindi sila nag-uusap pero parehang opinion. To start with these very young ones, that is K to 3, kasi this is the time when the the brains of the children are developing. So yung absorptive capacity nila uh, could be enhanced. Then we also have to teach them, uh, this is also when they develop uh, uh, good uh, relationships uh, with with adults and with fellow children. Uh, hindi lang yung uh, uh, pagturo sa kanila ng new knowledge, but also uh, dealing with each other, with other children, with the teachers, uh, with the community, yung mga behavioral aspects na yan. Uh, at saka, very, ang lumalabas kasi, mas resilient ang mga uh, younger children and mas resistant. So yun ang advice. Uh, uh, of the bat, eh, siyempre, you'll immediately think that you start with the older children. Pero sabi nila, kailangan yung bata kasi yung pag-form ng thinking processes nila. Kasi we keep on talking about, about uh, kailangan, uh, uh, ka kailangan marunong mag-analyze, kailangan marunong mag-group work to work with other people, kailangan marunong makikitungo sa mga iba't ibang ano, sa adults, etc. And it is at this stage where uh, these lessons are lasting uh, on. Now, uh, yung sa senior high, kasi may mga labs yun and, and mga sa mga laboratories at mga uh, kailangan yung hands-on, kailangan mo supervise din sila ng teachers. Sa junior high, uh, I would imagine that uh, we will be uh, expanding to, to junior high uh, as soon as it is possible kasi ang objective talaga natin, all levels, kailangan mayroong face-to-face -face dahil uh, wala namang debate uh, among us, whether in depth ed or the rest of society, but face-to-face uh, -face, uh, uh, encounters uh, with, with, with faculty, with the community, or a school atmosphere is always uh, very uh, useful. So, uh, Malcolm, may dagdag ka ba? Oh, at saka si Roger, uh, kasi he is tracking uh, all, the, all the numbers. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, Director Nina, uh, to answer the question of Ina, no? uh, well, based on the joint memorandum circular uh, between DepEd and DOH, so again, as I have mentioned, uh, isang daan yung pampublikong paaralan na binubuo natin no? para dun sa initial. Pero sa katunayan, batay dun sa pinakita ko rin kaninang datos, uh, hindi lang naman talaga na tutok doon sa mga elementary or kinder to grade 3 natin. May mga nakasama na talaga, Ina, na senior high school and at the same time junior high school. So open naman ang Department of Health na magsama na tayo ng mga junior high school uh, as long as they pass the qualification. At uh, siguruhin lang na mas madami pa din. So bilang natin yung ating kinder to grade 3 able to comply with the joint memorandum circular. At tulad po na nabanggit ng ating kalihim na doon sa ating expansion program ay tuloy-tuloy naman yung pagdagdag natin ng ating mga grade levels. Kaya babalikan natin yung kaninang binanggit natin na pag-aaral. Um, dito papasok yung kahalagahan ng pag-aaral uh, for us to decide later on if we can escalate already uh, or level up the, the grade levels uh, in the pilot implementation. Thank you, Asik Malcolm. Um, Director Roger. Director Nina, have, okay na. Uh, uh, yes, just to, ano lang, just to supplement lang. Um, bali, pagkatapos ng ating pilot, pag na-assess na natin, dalawang klaseng expansion ang gagawin natin. First expansion is geographic. So ito yung depende doon sa COVID risk assessment ng DOH. So ibig sabihin, maradagdagan yung, posible madagdagan yung mga areas na mag-implement. Yung second expansion, yung nabanggit na nga ni Secretary at sa kanin ni Asik Malcolm, yung pagdagdag ng mga grade level. For example, ngayon, K to 3 lang. So pag maganda ang result ng ating pilot, so we can expand up to grade 6 o pwedeng ma-improve na rin or ma-include na rin yung junior high school as mentioned by Secretary and then ASIC Malcolm. So, it depends on the assessment of the pilot expansion. Thank you. 
Thank you, Director Roger. Marami pong salamat. Um, Ms. Ina? Yes, uh, Ms. Ina, clarify ko lang kay ASEC Garma about the 30 schools. So, 30 schools po yung allowed uh, that will push through this November 15. Pero madadagdagan po siya. So, does that mean na mag adjust din po yung schedule natin because two months lang yung naka a lot for the limited face-to-face -face classes. So, every time po ba na ma madadagdagan, it means mag adjust din po yung mga additional schools that will be approved when it comes to the scheduled pilot fund. Thank you. Okay. Uh, ma'am, if I may respond, ma'am. Of course. Okay. Uh, Ms. Ina, doon sa uh, 30 schools, yun na yung definitely mag-start ng November 15. And as I have said, kahapon, nagkaroon tayo ng second round ng updating from the regions. So, ito po ay umaabot na sa itong po or 70 no so ito po mga nauuna nating nababalidate ay ito na po yung halos sigurado na na magi-start ng November 15 uh, bagamat ang tayo po ay nakadepende kasi no doon sa listahan na inilalabas ng DOH so since yung pong impormasyon o yung listahan uh, yung pangalawang listahan ng galing sa DOH noong lamang pong isang linggo natin i think Thursday yata uh, natin nakuha so, bibigyan din po natin ng counting uh, panahon o palugit yung mga paaralan para makapaghanda sila. Kasi katulad po ng sinabi kanina ni Director Roger, hindi lang naman yung listahan ng DOH ang ating basihan. So, kailangan i-validate ulit natin ito bang mga paaralan na kasama doon sa listahan ng DOH ay pumasa doon sa ating assessment tool na ginagamit. Partikular, doon sa ating napakahalagang requirement no which is the LGO concurrence, the parents concurrence at uh, yung community. So malaking bahagi nung isang daan Miss Ina ang magsisimula ng November 15. Kung meron mang hindi sasabay ng November 15, hindi ganon kalayo yung PETSA. Thank you. Thank you very much Asik Malcolm. Miss Ina, um I think that wraps up the two questions. Maraming salamat for joining us. Um, we can proceed with our next partner from the media. Um, can I call on Ms. Ara Perez of ABS-CBN? Hello po. Good morning. Good morning, Sec, and good morning to everyone. With the alert level 3 status po dito sa Metro Manila, at sinasabi, pababa yung cases natin dito, how likely po yung mapasama yung NCR schools sa pilot run ng face-to-face class? Right. Mental health awareness. Wow. Uh, gandang sanong yan dahil uh, malaking po ng ating, uh, ating mga learners uh, next to Region 4A are in, uh, in NCR. And uh, so, um, much attention is focused uh, on uh, NCR. So, uh, depending yan sa assessment ng, ano, ng uh, dalawa kasing agencies na ito, eh, ang involved is Department of Health and the Department of, of Education. At saka ang kanilang ginagawa ay granular. Limbawa din, sa private schools, there are private schools in Metro Manila who have uh, uh, expressed an interest. At saka, Mayroong uh, uh, a number, hindi naman maraming marami. Uh, I, I know one which has very detailed uh, uh, plan for face-to-face for, for -face and it's located also in Metro Manila. So uh, that's a, a possibility and I also believe, uh, Ara, that uh, we should look at uh, how the pilot will work in urban-based community. I mean, or urban-based uh, schools because uh, like it or not, we, we have schools in, in the urban areas which also have problems with and uh, with the with COVID. So uh, uh, dapat uh, matingnan natin yan uh, considering the uh, huge number also of learners that we have in the, not only in NCR but also in other uh, areas like Cebu for example. You will notice that uh, Many of the schools which qualified are from Cebu, but these are from the uh, um, 
some of the schools, mga Giga, mga Last Mile, and uh, not necessarily in the center of the city itself. Uh, it's the same with, uh, I suppose, it's the same with Iloilo and, and other. So, para ma-achieve natin yung gusto natin malaman sa pilot, uh, it would be good to have information as to how it works in urban-based uh, schools like, like NCR. So, we're keeping uh, 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 an, a very close eye on, on the, the NCR schools. Pag idaan yan sa granular, uh, baka may ma-recommend ang, ang IATF at Department of Health na, na pwede na. At saka depende sa readiness ng school also, lalo na sa private sector. Thank you, Ara. Uh, Director Nina? Yes, Asik Malcolm, would you like to add? Uh, just to add lang, uh, Ms. Ara, uh, karamihan sa mga eskwelahan na pumapasa no, doon sa granular assessment ng DOH ay kabilang sa level 2 and level 1. So kung nasa level 3 INCR, uh, baka hindi pa pumasok. Thank you. Thank you po. Yes, just, Ms. Ara. Uh, po, just one last question. Regarding private schools po, may mga mababanggit na po tayong uh, names ng school na kasama dun sa 20. Well, uh, ang, ang, ang kabisado ko is uh, one international school, international school, uh, which months ago already submitted their uh, uh, to no less to as it were mother their their plan for handling the crisis. But again, since uh, right now we are in partnership with the Department of Health, uh, so in geographical location, Nela and so on will probably be considered by the Department of Health. But as far as we are concerned, they they have complied with what we required. This is the one school that uh, I am quite familiar with. The other schools I'm not yet. Uh, uh, familiar with them. Baka alam ni, ano, ni uh, Asik Ngarma. Si uh, taga-NCR siya nung unang panahon. <laughs> oh, oh. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Uh, just to add lang, uh, Ms. Ara, uh, we're still waiting for the completion of the nominations from the uh, regions, no? Uh, yung three nom nominees for each region. And this will undergo the, the assessment as provided for by the DEPED order that was just recently issued. So once we complete that, probably that can be included in the next update, uh, Ms. Ara. And also to cite lang po, ma'am, uh, the case or the cases of the international schools, uh, we will ask, we will have a different or uh, a, a, a separate guideline for the international schools. Uh, uh, other than the private school guideline. So kasi yung gagamitin nating assessment tool for the public schools will basically the same tool that we will use for the assessment and evaluation of the nominated private schools from the regions. Thank you, Ms. Nina. Thank you, for. And thank you very much, Ms. Ara Perez of ABS-CBN. And yes, um, we acknowledge that there are some of our friends from the media and press raising their hands in the meeting room. Po. We would just like to inform you that we will follow the order of the pre-submitted questions and then we can call you right after. Po. Thank you very much. And to proceed, we'd like to call on uh, Ms. Jane Bautista of Inquirer. Yes, you are recognized. So, clarification lang po sa sinabi ni Asik Malcolm na kapag alert level 3, hindi pa po makakonsider yung NCR sa uh, mga schools. So, kaya lang po sabi po ni Yusik Bejere nung earlier this month na kahit po alert level 3 or 4 yung NCR, kung may mga barangay and school na nasa low risk, pwede pong i-include. So, may update po ba din? Kasi sabi po niya, pinag-aaralan pa lang po. Asik Karma can, uh, can handle that uh, uh, issue. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Uh, well, uh, again, as I have mentioned, yung atin pong qualified list of school is very dependent on the list being submitted to us by DOH. So, so far, doon po sa mga listahan, 
na naibigay na po nila sa amin ay wala pa pong kasama no coming from NCR but uh, well we are looking forward that in the next list or the succeeding list that they will give to us uh, baka meron na ngang nakasama based on granular assessment but then again uh, Miss Jane uh, hindi hindi ibig sabihin na pumasa ito sa DOH ay automatic makakasama na itong mga eskwelahan na to dahil dadaan pa rin ito doon sa concurrence no ng LGU and you know there's a, a big chance that probably uh, baka merong ibang uh, uh, rason no dahilan yung ating local government unit so dapat kasama yung concurrence ng LGU uh, sa NCR para po sila ay makasama dito thank you ma'am just an additional observation. I have noted that uh, the NCR uh, local government uh, officials tend to to move as one because they have in, uh, very intensive uh, discussions and meetings among themselves. So, so they tend to to have uh, very interrelated uh, decisions and and opinions there among themselves. Nagdidibate na yon sila. Eh. And usually, uh, the MMDA chair uh, speaks uh, in their behalf so for, for those who are part of the MMDA. So, uh, ganon ang, ang situation. And they're, 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 they're consulting all the time. So, yung mga views nila tend to be uh, interrelated. But in other, re other regions and in other places, uh, LGUs uh, tend also to be... Uh, uh, very independent, so they, they have their own views and uh, they also have their own uh, levels of consultation. So the own, uh, that, that's what we have to deal with because we cannot uh, insist on um, holding a pilot face-to-face uh, -face classes without the concurrence of the local government official. An experience ko at my level from where I sit I, I get uh, letters from local government officials who appeal that their their municipalities or their LGUs be included. Ang matatanggap ko yung mga uh, gustong isama yung kanilang uh, LGUs. Pero I understand from the reports of the regional directors that meron ding nag-back out ng mga uh, LGUs uh, for whatever reasons. Kung minsan eh, pag may spike bigla, atras yan. Um, even in like uh, Brunei, Jerusalem, they were already starting face-to-face -face nung nagkaroon ng uh, uh, increase at ano ka agad sila. They, they backed off immediately and uh, wait and are waiting for uh, better times. So, so ganun. Importante kasi ang local government because they will be the ones who will... Uh, be assisting us uh, in case we need uh, help or assistance from them. Yeah. Pero ano, uh, we are waiting for, for NCR, of course, and Region 4A, kasi this is where the big bulk of our uh, learners are. Yun ang pinakamarami, di ba, uh, Malcolm? Region 4A and NCR. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. You have Cebu, you have Iloilo, and pero yung yung dalaw, eh, Region 4A is even bigger than NCR. Oh, oh. Yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, and then the mix of regions where they come from, talagang polyglot yan eh, because of the uh, uh, people who are who are employed uh, in that region and where much economic activity is taking place. Mas marami pang ang learners tayo sa 4A kaysa NCR. So, uh, but we can learn from, uh, if, if some of them will qualify for the pilot, uh, we can learn how it is to handle face-to-face uh, -face in urban-based areas. Oh, it's like, it's like, I know, it's like Thailand. Thailand, Bangkok, Hindi, ano eh. Uh, but there are places in Thailand where they are having face-to-face, -face, pero not, not in Bangkok. Supposedly, November pa sila. Uh, because of the, the special concerns that they have. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary. Uh, Ms. Jane, would you have any follow-up questions? 
Uh, meron po bang updated number on the vaccination rate of teachers sa buong country? Kasi po, last year at reading, 57% po yung nabanggit ni Sek Malala. Okay, repeat ng question mo, Jane, because I was looking at some data. Kanina. May updated number po ba ng vaccination rate of teachers sa buong country? Po? Vaccination uh, rate, Secretary. Oo. Oh, oh. Kasi uh, for, uh, from the numbers of uh, Secretary Galvez, more than half already of our teachers have been vaccinated as a whole. Hindi yung mga pilot schools lamang. Because uh, months ago, we already urged our teachers not to wait for our turn. Kasi F4 ang classification ng teachers, di ba? And education. So we'll be fourth in the list of priorities. Ang sabi namin, they... Uh, they get themselves vaccinated na sa local governments kasi uh, ang mga local governments are very active in in vaccinating their citizenry it is it is for their own protection kasi kaya aggressive talaga in sabi namin you go to your barangay captain you go to your municipality uh, doon kayo magpa-vaccinate so uh, nag increase uh, ang number of uh, teachers who are vaccinated but then you have this ongoing debate, uh, as uh, you are aware uh, of also, this ongoing debate which takes place in uh, social media about the merits of vaccination and so on. But the official stand of government, of course, is to campaign uh, and encourage uh, our respective constituencies to, uh, to vaccinate uh, themselves. And I, I believe that is also the policy of, of most, if not all, countries to encourage people to get uh, vaccinated. Sa atin, ano na rin, significant na rin. At saka, ikaw ba yung may, may data, uh, Malcolm, or is it Roger, yung rate ng vaccination? Uh, Ma'am, meron po tayong ano, uh... Uh, care of the offices under USEC Alain, meron po tayong ginagamit na app, mobile application to track our uh, data regarding the vaccination. So, so far, tama yung nabanggit ni Ms. Jane that uh, there is already 57% uh, based on the uh, application or mobile app that have been vaccinated. Uh, however, ma'am, uh, it could be more than 57% because meron po tayo mga unreported uh, data pa. And I think as you have seen in the data a while ago, as I have presented, malaking bahagi na no, uh, yung mga pilot schools natin, ang, meron, ang, mga, ang kanilang guru at kawani ay bakunado na. So the data is with the uh, office of uh, Director Lope, ma'am. But uh that that could be more it could be it could be more than already 57 percent uh based on that and the next round of the updating mom is this october so probably by next week po meron na naman tayo update with regards to the increase in the vaccination rate thank you ma'am uh also secretary galvez gave me his personal assurance that uh, priority will be given to uh teachers and staff, especially in the pilot schools. Uh, sabi lang niya the other day that uh, uh, they're aware and, and he himself is really uh, very concerned about uh, uh, the risks that we might be exposing our, our, our children and our staff if we don't ensure uh, the vaccination of, of, of everyone. So, uh, they are already uh, accelerating it. You know, so okay. the other day, pa, uh, from a from a base of fifty of, of more than half, uh, baka tataas pa rin uh, yun talaga. Uh, but the debate, of course, in social media is uh, continuing uh, very heatedly. Uh, okay. All right, thank you, Secretary. Um, I think we can proceed with our um, next partner from the media who would like to ask some questions. Can I call on Ms. Catherine Cruz of Manila Times? 
Hi, good afternoon po. So, given po na hindi pa po kumpleto yung 100 schools na public and 20 schools na private, until when are we expecting po na matatapos yung pilot implementation natin? Given that it will start on, the, on November 15, pero iba-iba po kasi yung start nila depende kung kayaan magsisimula. So, kailan po rin expect na matatapos po yung pilot implementation? Well, we have we have a timetable, and we try to uh, comply with that uh, with that timetable. But of course, the big determinant is COVID itself. Pag aandar yan si si COVID, and hopefully we are all praying na uh, we will be uh, ma handle natin yan. Uh, then uh, we will move according to schedule. Dahil uh, alam naman natin why we want the uh, face-to-face. Pero uh, I would like to repeat again, uh, Catherine, yung yung face-to-face -face natin, hindi kagaya ng face-to-face -face mo. Lalo na hindi kagaya ng face-to-face -face ko. Mayroong iba, ay half day lang. Mayroong iba, one day. Uh, the rest is already. And in one of the countries na talaga ang bilib na bilib tayo, it's seeding in education sa, sa Southeast Asia ay hindi naman araw-araw ano at saka uh, ang mga bata batang-bata pa train na silang mag mag mag, mag, -obey, <laughs> mag susunod ng advice uh, ano pag sasabihin uwi kayo uwi sila yung yung ganong tipo uh, oh. but uh, perhaps there might be those na pag sasabihin uwi hindi uwi <laughs> <laughs> Sabihin yung huwag kayong umuwi, uuwi. Yung mga ganong, ano, that's why it's very important na yung ating uh, to divert a little bit. That's why very important na yung K-3 uh, exposure, which Japan is doing and other countries are doing. Talagang nakafocus sila uh, on those levels kasi doon na, na si shape ang personality, etc., etc., uh, ng mga bata. Uh, kung kami lang, Catherine, gusto namin, we want to work according to schedules because we assess, I assess my people and my executives according to, according to our plans, according to the numbers, and we pressure Ro Roger to present the number that we are expecting or, or Malcolm to speed up kasi Malcolm is also in sports. But uh, 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 we appreciate the fact that planning is almost impossible uh, at, at, at this time and uh, something uh, comes up uh, uh, without uh, warning which has happened not only to us but uh, as far as I know because right now we have a meeting of the governing board of, uh, which, is, which is being chaired by Yusek uh, Nepo so we're always at, uh, informing each other about what is happening in our respective countries and it is not what we think it is so lahat tayo na lang tayo na lang at si Jubuti ang hindi nagbubukas ng klase and if I were Jub be Jubuti I already protest ka insulto sa kanila yung palagi na lang sila kinukumpere as a ano sa uh, 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 a uh, parang negative example. Kaya na lang dalawa dyan. Oo. Tapos tayo naman, you, Catherine, know that we opened in October last year. We know that we opened last September. But when we read in an international newspaper that our schools are closed, we believe it. And we mourn it, even if we were in the debates about October 13th. Uh, and and uh, uh, September 13 and October 5, dalawang taon na yung nagbubukas tayo. Pero pag may nagsabi sa atin na, hoy, ano, eh, naniniwala din tayo. And that, that's part of the unpredictability. And, and of course, as you know, uh, when you plan, you, you consider the environment. And if you have a constantly changing environment and sometimes even a hostile and listening environment then supposing supposing uh i will share with you a wonderful piece of news which probably has come out already 
you have this one teacher from Cebu who is now one of the top 10 finalists in the Global Teacher Award. Catherine, that is $1 million donated by, uh, 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 that's a program of Dubai. Uh -oh. We do that every year you have one or two, at the very least one who qualifies in the top 10. Mayroon pang nagka-qualify sa top 50. But then, when we uh, uh, inform the public, hey, well, there, there, there is good news. Uh, you, you, you have a, a, a teacher who is, uh, who, who is competing and is gunning for $1 million award by, 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 by Dubai. And uh, uh, we get excited, of course. Oh, I get excited. It's time our teacher, a teacher qualifies. I go off to Dubai to, to, to watch them. First time uh, somebody qualified, again in the top 10, I think number two or number three. Tingnan mo yan, Catherine. IP, PhD. Nagtuturo ng math. Where can you get such an ideal example of a teacher one can aspire for? PhD na mathematics pa, school head pa, finalist pa sa Dubai for $1 million. So even if uh, somebody else made it from another country, I was still proud of him and I was exhibiting him around the country. Who noticed him? But we are crying and crying. Why are we at the bottom of the list? Next year, pagkasunod na taon, there were at least two of them nag-qualifying sa babae. Ag Taga Mindanao pa, nagtuturo ng physics, yung isa ng original na yung mathematics. And we always like to think that, that Filipinos, uh, Filipinos are very artistic, they are beautiful dancers, they are great singers, but ne not necessarily great physicists. Ito physics, babae, sinamahan ko din. Uh, and so we issued the usual press release, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then there's another award, which uh, our teachers we encourage our teachers to aspire for. This is a, this is the Princess Chakra Award. Uh, this is uh, you know, so Thailand. It's twenty five thousand dollars lang naman. But then $25,000 is $25,000. Sabi ni isang kabigan ko, nako, liling pag manalo yung teacher mo ng $1 million, he will never, never look at the pen again. <laughs> because he'll be very, 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 very famous. And then of course, you you have Metro Bank, $1 million award. And uh, these are wonderful, very inspiring uh, uh, feats of, 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 of our teachers. Tapos ngayon bago lang, eh, sa broadcasting, eh, meron din. And our, our learners keep on winning awards. But then we are so busy crying about being compared, about Djibouti, and then we are worried about being at the bottom of the list. We don't think about those who are at the top of the list. And we say, what is the state of education, et cetera, et cetera. And this is where the pilot studies are important. Because we will be learning, uh, we will be learning from them. If you'll take us one month, uh, okay, if you get our answers already in one month, then that's wonderful. But if it will take us more than one month, then we'll linger, linger around and, and find out uh, take for example in, in, in the city of Pasig I, I like to cite Pasig and I have cited Pasig again and again and again this is because in our much unlamented much lamented much cried about Pisa Pisa Pasig produced learners whose scores are 
higher or equivalent to the scores of OECD countries in Europe. Maka match sa pinaka best natin sa Asia. So this is passing. So there must be something in passing. There must be something in the way our learners in Bali speak English because they did very well in English. There must be something in my region, which is six and seven. Why are they doing so well in math? But we don't see these things. We, 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 don't, we don't see these things. We say, edu say education has deteriorated. So where are these schools coming from? Saan hangin sila? Ano yung sabi ko nga, pinibiro ko nga bagyo. Anong klaseng hangin ninyo? Bakit ang galing ninyo? Why are they doing so well in English? Or anong klase ng mga Visayans 6 and 7 na tinatawanan natin because they have this exotic accent like me. And then they're doing well in math. Even as they can dance and they can sing. Or, 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 uh, or in Bicol, imagine a, a school in, in Titan Partido, uh, ano, anong pangalan nun sa Bicol? Also doing well and it's called Partido, Partido, ano ba yung pangalan? Uh, ano, it's a, a school in Bicol. These 20 schools are cut, scattered all over the country. And, and so the pilot implementation is going to be uh, uh, a mine of, of, of information for us. Kaya your question is very important because kung ang mag-qualify are those from the uh, far off regions and so on because uh, because of the health aspects. We have to watch out also for the urban based areas. Uh, kasi that is where most of our students are. And we have also to look at the private schools because that's what the constitution tells us. So uh, there are many good things about education, which we do not notice. Can you imagine a school, a high school teacher qualifying for a one million dollar award in Dubai, and, and he will probably be going there. And last year it was a, a woman teaching physics in far off Mindanao, and then young. Pinakauna talaga ang gustong gusto ko eh somebody from Panay, IP, PhD Mathematics. And you know how he teaches mathematics? By dancing and singing, IP songs, IP shapes. Di ba yun sa mga IP designs, mga squares, mga triangles, and so on. And that is how he teaches mathematics. And these are new ways of teaching. Anyway, so nasermonan ko tuloy si Catherine. Because <laughs> you triggered your, your interest in the urban and, and that is a very important area because that is where most of our students are. Thank you for your question. Do you have any follow-up questions? Uh, yes, but when it comes naman po to curriculum and instruction, given a blended nga po yung system, which is my face to face and then another week of uh, distance learning what changes are we expecting naman po in terms of curriculum and instruction well uh you, you know that originally before 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 the <clears throat> before the pandemic uh we, we had 15000 learning competencies which we require our, our children to master we have reduced this to 5000 the pinaka importante, the capacity to reason critically, the ability to work with other people, the, the thirst for discovery of new things beyond uh, what textbooks say, and so on and so forth. So, uh, sa curriculum, we are changing the curriculum, as you know. Yung ano natin tawag natin eh, yung MALC MELC. Uh, most essential learning competencies, 5,000 uh, na, na lang compared to the 15,000 which we, uh, when we started, uh, uh, naabutan ko yun ng uh, ano, uh, learning competencies. Biro mo, ano, 
mismo ako siguro ka rin, hindi ako papasadya. 15,000 competencies na yan. Because si, si ano, Roger is good in statistics, but ako, I'm, 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 I've never been good in arithmetic, in the, the hard sciences. So, hindi ako papasa siguro. Baka ma-expel pa ako. <laughs> Thank you, Secretary. And we'll also probably uh, refer this question also to our OUCI, Kina Yusek Dads, so that we can provide uh, Ms. Catherine Cruz with a more concrete answer as to ano talaga yung specific na bababago sa ating curriculum. Ayan, thank you very much. Um, shall we proceed with our next reporter? Can I call on Bon Smagsambol of Rappler? Hello po. Sorry po, hindi ko po mabubuksan yung camera kung mabagal yung connection. Anyway, uh, actually, I have two questions. Uh, two parts siya. So, yung unang part po ay kay uh, Director Malcolm Garma. Yeah. yeah uh, Asik Malcolm. Sorry, Asik, Gar Asik Garma po. Yeah. So, yung question ko, uh, can we get lang a categorical answer? Kasi medyo confusing yung mga figures na binigay sa amin kanina. Na initially, initially, it was 120 during the past uh, previous press briefings. And now, uh, he was saying kasi kanina na 30 yung magpupush through with um, sa November 15. So, uh, tama ba na until makaabot tayo ng 120? Uh, I mean, uh, paano ba? Uh, Kailangan nating ma-reach yung 120 bago makapag-start ng pilot run ng limited face-to-face -face classes. Director Nina, can I already respond to that? Yes, Asik Malcolm, please. Okay. Uh, good morning, Bonds. So, ganito yung ganito yung takbo no para para maunawaan ng lahat. So, initially, we submitted 638 uh, yung nomination natin uh, para ito yung pwedeng mag face to face based on the initial uh, evaluation of the regions. So we submitted this to DOH. So per agreement in the joint memorandum circular, so 100 public school and 20 private schools ang papayagan to undergo the uh, face to face. So definitely, sobra yung 638. So okay. DOH now has to eliminate by way of uh, making granular assessment doon sa mga schools or yung mga lugar ng mga schools that we have nominated. So based on that, they have released an initial list of 59. Okay. So of that 59, uh, pinarevalidate natin yan sa region kasi kailangan nga natin yung pagpayag ng LGU, pagpayag ng mga magulang. So nung nag-report ang mga regional directors natin, so yung 59 na yon ang makakapagpatuloy lang ay 30. Kasi nga, yung iba, ayaw na ng LGU, umatras na sila. Yung iba, ayaw ng magulang. O yung iba, may tumaas ang cases. So 30. Now, our objective in compliance with the Joint Memorandum Circular is to complete the 100 public schools. So as I have mentioned again, Bons, kanina, madadagdagan pa yan. In fact, uh, based on the unofficial tally that we have, it can already reach as of yesterday to 70. Okay. Pero we need to revalidate. So, okay. now, yung 30 na nauna or 70 na susunod, yan na yung sigurado na magsisimula. Now, we don't have to complete the 100 bonds. Kung ilan lang talaga yung pumasa based on the listing of DOH, yun lang yung papatuloy natin. Because we cannot force uh, the 100 schools, kung walang concurrence ng LGU, ayaw pumayag ng magulang. Okay. okay. So, by November 15, whether uh, 120 or not. Yes. There is a possibility that we can reach the 100 or lesser. Okay. However, Bonds, with the 100 as the pilot, we, is, we will now venture into the expansion program based on the study. And to make it so, siguro, just to add lang sa question ni Catherine kanina, the pilot implementation only refers to the study, the period of the study, which is two months, or it can be less. Mm -hmm. Kahit na tapos na yung two months, tuloy-tuloy na yung mga schools natin to do the blended face-to-face home-based learning. Unless uh, they will be stopped, because of adverse uh, situations. So, tuloy-tuloy na yun. So, wala nang tuloy-tuloy na hanggang matapos na yung school year. 
And then padagdag ng padagdag until such time, bonds, that we can already uh, reach the third phase of our framework, which is the new phase, yung new normal phase, rather. Na mas marami ng schools ang involved. So I hope that clarifies our number, bonds. So 30, madadagdagan yan, hanggang sa hopefully maging 100 yan before November 10. Okay, right. So uh, just to follow up on that, what is the timeline? So uh, when can we expect uh, more schools to be announced given that uh, 10 days left before, I mean, bago mag-November? So yung 30, per, yung 30 schools kasi that's just 25% of the 120 schools target, diba? So parang uh, less than a month, less than a month na lang. Meron po ba tayong timeline or uh, kite date kung kailan kami mag -e expect ng ilang iba pang schools? Uh, within the week, Bones, we are already doing it. Uh, again, yung 17, di ko lang ma-announce ngayon kasi we kailangan lang ma-validate pa namin. No? But uh, within the week, we can already complete, probably we can already complete the 100. And then, I don't know when will be the next uh, press con for the update will happen. So that's the time that uh, you will get an update for us. From us. Thank you for asking. Can I join the conversation? Yes, yeah, Secretary, please. Yes. Uh, you're asking for a definite timeline. You're asking for definite and concrete schedules. You're asking for definite and concrete numbers. And what I had been sharing a while ago is that we have to have definite also information about the movement and the behavior of COVID-19. Ang crucial kasi dito ang behavior ng COVID-19. Pag aandar yan si COVID-19, then we'll have to go back to our uh, uh, tables again, to our numbers again. Pero mayroon kaming, uh, mayroon kaming uh, schedule na ka-layout. But we are not saying that it's going to be hard and fast na Talagang uh, the sun will rise in the east and uh, set in the west. Uh, we, 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 uh, we, we cannot say that with great certainty. Kaya nga sinabi ko kanina to, to one of the, the girls, sinabi ko nga na uh, planning at this time is, is really a very uh, uh, difficult and, and, and challenging uh, exercise because you have one factor which you cannot... Uh, completely uh, control and this is this is covid and so our numbers have to keep on changing let me give an example